most of the SMB trucking companies, um, insurance is now their third largest line item after fuel and labor. And the most common way I saw a trucking company go out of business was either not being able to find the insurance coverage in the first place or not being able to afford it. And on the other side of the equation, you had insurance companies that despite 30 to 40 straight quarters of rate increases couldn't improve their profitability. We have built a lot of internal validation tools for our own databases where we're really asking agents uh, the minimum set of questions that we think we, we need to ask. That results in our agents getting applications into us in about five to six minutes. Um, and we're returning quotes um, within 24 hours typically. What we've done is, is build risk scores to understand that you know, trucks with safety technology perform truck, perform better than trucks without safety technology, what they hear, and therefore less likely to be in crashes and can deserve lower risk. This episode of the Insurance Stream podcast is sponsored by Viva Virtual Assistance. With Viva, you can save over 60% of the cost of hiring a full-time employee, not to mention employees are impossible to find right now. Viva makes the whole process easy and affordable with college-educated, bilingual virtual assistants that operate in the convenient central time zone. Go to vivavs.com and see why hundreds of insurance agencies across the United States have chosen Viva for their administrative staffing needs. Again, that's vivavs.com. All right, I'm here with Mike Dorfman. He is with Coffee Financial, K-O-F-F-I-E. These guys are the future of trucking insurance, and we're excited to have you on. Um, I wish I would have hit record a little bit sooner than I did because you were going going through. Uh, but, you know, I guess we'll back up just a hair. And, and so how did, who came, was this you that came up with this idea for, for a new way of insuring truckers? I mean, is this your baby? Uh, it's half of my baby, and, awesome. uh, <laughs> but my co-founder and I, uh, I think pretty serendipitously met and, and, and uh, conceived of, of coffee. Um, I was working in a, a family insurance agency business okay. uh, that was started by my great grandfather in wow. 1921. So I, wow. I grew up around truckers. I grew up around um, trucking businesses, logistics businesses, um, so in 1921, was he specializing in trucking or is that like kind yeah. of later? No, uh, it was a, a truck only kind of specialized um, agency wow. um, from the get go. Um, so, you know, a lot of our clients were sort of multi-generational trucking and transportation companies uh, that showed up at my birthday parties, showed up, you know, at family weddings, you know, just close friends. Bunch um, of truckers. A period of time. Awesome. And, um, you know, I did... Uh, summer odd jobs and warehouses on the back of trucks and things like that. So really got to know that business really well from a, from a young age and then went into the family business to learn the, the insurance side of the house. Sure. Um, and really that's where I started to see sort of the, the opportunity for coffee, which was that, you know, for most of the SMB trucking companies, um, insurance is now their third largest line item after fuel oh, yeah. and labor. Yeah. And the most common way I saw a trucking company go out of business was either not being able to find insurance coverage in the first place or not being able to afford their premium. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was you know ridiculous that it was, it was such a, a pain point for uh, truckers. And on the other side of the equation, you had insurance companies that despite 30 to 40 straight quarters of rate increases couldn't improve their profitability. Um, you know, so I think those things coupled with the fact that we were using, uh, you know, typewriters, cutting paper checks, faxing things, you know, I thought there was a huge opportunity to bring sort of structured data and technology together to, you know, improve the, the, the line as a whole. Sure. So <clears throat> you, you were working in the family business, you've been doing nothing but you know, nothing but trucking insurance. How, how does coffee come into play? And then who's the other, uh, the other author of this story? Yeah. So my, my co-founder Ian came from a, a more um, straight technology background. And he had been working with, with big data um, in, in a mapping software company and in the hedge fund world. Um, and, and really we had the, the good fortune of a mutual friend putting us in touch um, and I think from the first day we met, we met consecutively for 
six months or so after that um, until we felt like we really had um, some substance to what we were both kind of thinking about building and sure. and made it here. That's awesome. So <clears throat> how many states do you guys operate in? We're in three states right now. What's the, what are those states? Tennessee, Illinois, and New Jersey. Perfect. So now walk me through how you guys are doing trucking insurance differently than anybody else out there. Yeah. So I think all starts on the application process. Um, we have built a lot of internal validation tools through our own databases where we're really asking agents um, the minimum set of questions that we think we, we need to ask. That results in our agents getting applications into us in about five to six minutes. Um, and we're returning quotes um, within 24 hours typically. Um, so that is, you know, essentially a one business day cycle for a bindable quote um, contrasted with, you know, 45 plus days from a lot of the competitive trucking markets out there. Is this uh, on your own paper? This is on, uh, we're an MGA. So okay. we okay. use Sutton National uh, as our paper. Okay. Sorry, uh, continue. That's okay. Um, so that's number one. Number two is we've built a proprietary risk score um, that actually looks at the safety of each individual vehicle, each individual truck that we're insuring. So, and from a legacy trucking insurance world, basically a truck is a truck is a truck, whether that is a 1997 with 18 speed manual transmission, um, no anti lock brakes, um, no electronic stability control, kind of on and on, bare bones, steel metal rubber um versus a 2022 you know let's say um truck with all the bells and whistles with esc and aeb sort of full suite of adas equipment cameras radars lidars you name it um, those things are gonna get the exact same premium from almost every insurance company out there today sure and what we've done is is built risk scores to understand that you know trucks with safety technology perform truck perform better than trucks without safety technology, go figure, and therefore less likely to be in crashes and, and deserve lower rates. Sure. So, uh, and, and you were telling me about the telematics. I mean, you guys have like the lowdown on everything that's going on with every truck you insure 24 hours a day, which clearly has to make a huge difference in, in like, should we renew this guy, right? That's right. Um, you know, so we're connected to 100% of the trucks we insure, um, and, and all of those uh, have not only a, a telematics gateway um, plugged into the ECU of the truck, but also a camera installed on the dash. So we're getting, you know, one second resolution uh, amounts to a couple million rows of data per truck per month. Um, so really understand, you know, full visibility where the trucks are, how fast they're going, um, how much of the time they're speeding. Um, if their drivers are distracted, if they're following the car in front of them too closely, um, on and on and on. And right. you know, importantly, that also allows us to um, adjust claims much more efficiently because instead yeah. of doing all of the fact finding from the police reports and getting the driver statements and contacting witnesses, um, we can pull the telemetry data ourselves. We can pull the camera footage. Um, and that really helps us defend our truckers um, in case of an accident. Um, where oftentimes, um, you know, they've, they've got big targets on their back um, and, and we find that the the other vehicles are, are really the ones at fault. Yeah, well, and then two, yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say is because I've got a big motorhome and I, I don't have a CDL or anything like that. But um, in, I guess if, if I was domiciled out of some states, I would need to have a CDL. But luckily, I'm in Arizona, so I don't. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, the it happens, right? Like you're driving along and then some little car zips in front of you because you've maintained, uh, you know, more space in front of you because you've got, you know, 70 feet. And I mean, I don't have 70, I have 45 feet, but you know, then a semi, a big rig, you got 70 some feet plus, you know, however many tens of thousands of pounds to slow down. So they zip right in front of you and take advantage of that constantly. I mean, you don't have to talk to very many truck drivers to know that that's a problem. So <clears throat> how much in claims do you think, that would otherwise be classified maybe as F and, and I don't, this is a hard number. This is a hard question. Cause like I'm asking for a number, but is it a lot? I mean, are you guys have a lot of claims where you're like, wow, good thing we had this camera in here because otherwise this would have been deemed an at fault accident, but we can clearly see that it was not, and you're submitting it to, to not have it be at fault. Right. I mean, does that, does that happen a lot? Yes, it happens. It happens a lot. Um, it's hard to quantify exactly for you, right. but I, yeah. I would say that, uh, 
we we subsidize the cameras and telematics equipment in all of our insured vehicles and it's well worth the cost of putting them in there 100 percent, i believe that so you guys are in three states what are your plans for expansion yeah so i i think what we are are focused on is one state expansion two would be product expansion so we want to be um you know a one-stop shop for truckers um in in all of the insurance lines that they need and um, we think there's really a, a lack of a national brand um and national and, and sort of full product suite um out there and, and we want to be that for all of the the, the small and, and middle market trucking companies um and and two and, and the, the other thing is we just rebranded as copy financial um which uh and announced in tandem with that the launch of our our, our credit card um which is i think the first uh trucking specific credit card business credit card out there um and, and that is sort of uh, our first foray into a broad suite of financial services products that we want to um layer on top of our core insurance business um and and essentially the the impetus there was that we, we found that um, our trucking customers were having um, the same pain points that they had with with the typical insurance products they're having the same uh, issues with um, you know getting credit um, with equipment uh, leasing and financing with freight factoring um, kind of on and on down the line of all of these uh, services that they have to pay for um, really hard for them to kind of get um, preferable terms that you know the, the large national you know the top one percent of trucking companies get um, and, and we think we can be extremely helpful to them by providing those financial services as well, um, helping you know increase their their bottom line and profit margin, which we think in turn makes them a safer insurance risk. It's good logic. So, what about like um, newer truck driving firms or um, you know truck driving firms that have? And I'm I'm by no means an expert in the trucking industry insurance industry. I've just had enough people ask me enough questions to where I know some of the sticking points. Um, so maybe like a little, little bit dangerous <laughs> to, to be, uh, asking, asking some things. Cause it's possible. I don't know what I'm talking about and feel free to tell me. I don't know if I know, <laughs> but my understanding is, it's like your newer trucking firms, super difficult time getting insured. Um, your trucking firms, uh, there was one guy that I talked to and, um, he was actually asking me for help and I'm like, brother, I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do for you. Uh, and, but he, he came to me because he had started doing his trucking business and I, if I, my memory is serving me correctly, he had been in business for less than three years, but just by nature of demand, he had been able to expand his fleet to like six or seven trucks. And so he was having like his current insurance company wouldn't insure them because I think that they limit them to like two or three. I mean, is this kind of ringing a bell for you? Limit yeah, them to like two or three trucks that they were able to insure until they've been in business X amount of time. And so he was like, now I got to find someone else to go through and I can't find anybody. I mean, are those kind of things still an issue with, uh, with coffee or is it is, or do you guys have solutions in place for those kind of issues? Yeah. So I, I think throughout the industry, new venture trucking companies That's have right. a really hard time yeah. finding insurance. Um, you know, same with you. Same with us. Okay. Um, we won't insure brand new ventures. Um, we will insure companies with two years or more in business. Okay. Um, and, you know, as you alluded to, also look at kind of ratios for, of, of the number of trucks and the number of years in business. Right. Um, and the reason for that is oftentimes we see um, good truck drivers that are great, um, you know, operating their own truck safely. But you know, there's a recruiting piece of can you recruit other safe drivers to come work for you and, right. and can you maintain, you know, not just your own truck, but safely maintain you know, a fleet of equipment. Um, right. and, and those are, are things that are can be really challenging yeah. for trucking companies. I, I think, you know, going back to the financial services piece, uh, we will get into some of these newer ventures when we think we can provide them with um, more of a, a, a box uh, of what they need. Uh, and we can feel good that we can provide them or help them get, you know, financing or a lease on a, a new safer truck with ADAS equipment on board. Uh, we can help them get, you know, credit that they need. We can help them get a, a preferred, you know, fuel price, for example. Um, we think we can really help those folks um, sustain a, a profitable business over time. Um, for now, we like to see that that they're able to to kind of do that on their own. 
um, before they they grow too quickly. Um, yeah, because I can imagine, especially with the current state of the environment of just the economy, uh, it could be real easy to get too big too quick and kind of be in a little bit over your head before you quite know what you're dealing with um, on a lot of fronts, but specifically on trucking, right? Because there's big shortage. Yeah, I think we're going to see a little bit of a of a reckoning going into next year, where you know the over the pandemic, um, freight rates were at an all time high. Um, mm-hmm. So trucking companies were making money hand over fist, right? Um, and there weren't enough. There was enough supply of of trucks really for everyone to um, get the equipment that they wanted and and grow at the speed that they wanted to. And now that some of those trucks are starting to come in. Freight, weight, freight rates have subsequently dropped substantially. Fuel prices are substantially up. Um, so the the overall kind of demand for trucking is, is a little bit lower um, and is being flooded with the supply of trucks. So, you know, you have uh, a lot of companies ending up with equipment now that um, they may not have needed because it was, you know, delayed a year or two to actually deliver it. Yeah, that'll be crazy. I mean, I think that's going to be across a lot more sectors than just trucking, unfortunately. But um, it'll be interesting. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what happens. What kind of, t- and I know this is probably another impossible question, so I'm sorry. Uh, what kind of time frame are you guys looking at to at least be in like in the lower 48? Or do you know? Um- yeah, hard to say specifically. I mean, I, I think we want to capture our goal is to capture uh, about two thirds of the trucking market or be available to two thirds of trucking companies rather um, by the end of next year. Sure. Uh, and then we'll kind of slowly expand into, you know, most of the lower 48 uh, over the next two to three years, I would say. That's awesome. What what kind of um, so so you how, how much of the market do you guys currently serve like is it half or a third or uh it's probably a little bit less than a than a third uh okay. jersey is a large trucking market illinois and tennessee also pretty pretty big trucking markets yeah so what what kind of uh i mean what class codes do you guys ensure of truckers like so we probably. are focused on on really uh two things, the type of vehicle. So heavy duty equipment. So, you know, class medium duty, a little bit, we play in sort of class four, five, six, but but the majority of what we write is, is heavy duty trucks, class seven and eight, um, looking for four higher trucking companies, um, kind of your, your run of the mill, um, trailer and operation types of drive in refrigerated goods, um, flatbed, um, you know, nothing, I think too hazardous, um, no hazmat, no, uh, poisonous chemicals, nothing like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's cool. So your your retail stores, your deliveries, your grocery stores, stuff like that. Yeah, commodities, bulk goods. Perfect. Perfect. Is there anything that we've missed about uh, coffee? So again, let's go over those three states again. Uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, Illinois, Illinois, and New Jersey. New Jersey. So how do agents get signed up to start writing insurance? Through. Yeah, they can uh, go to our website. Uh, it is getcoffee.com. And there's a contact form in there for, for agents. Um, and, and we'll ask you for some kind of simple appointment questions. And from there, we'll give you access to our um, agent portal um, where you can start getting submissions through. Sweet. Yeah, it's just getcoffie.com. Click on contact us. And then that little drop down says, who are you, agent broker? Really simple. Well, that's awesome. Uh, any specific requirements that agents need to have when they come to you to start writing insurance? Or is it um, you guys have such a good program in place that any agent, whether they have experience in trucking or not, can can come and work with you guys? Or do you like to see some experience? We will only work with specialized agents. Um, so we like to see you know at least a majority of, your biz, of, of an agent's book is coming from trucking and transportation. Um, so logistics, supply chain broadly, but yeah. we definitely like to see the expertise. Um, truckers require you know some some nuanced coverage and, and some nuanced uh, servicing. So we, we certainly like to see um, agents with experience in our in our sector. Um, but beyond that, um, you know all all shapes and sizes. Sure. So would a generalist that just wants to have a trucking market be a good fit for you guys or probably not so much? If they have specific uh, truck producers um, within a generalist office, we do work with with those individuals, uh, but we'll keep it kind of tailored to the the folks that are focused on the sector. 
Sure. Perfect. Anything we've missed? No, I don't think so. Covered a lot. Well, perfect. Well, I appreciate it, Mike. Um, Mike Dorfman, getcoffee.com. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to having you guys back as you expand states. I hope you'll come back. Um, I hope you guys will reach out because we would love to help get the word out to these agents because I know it's a it's a rough, rough business to try and write. And that's, you know, in, in, in my new life um, with with what I do, uh, I help agents get get appointments with uh, new insurance carriers. And, you know, I <clears throat> there's a lot of people that come to me and I want to write. I'm going to write truckers. You know how much the premium is on those truckers? And it's like. Yes, you know, I mean, like, because you, you, you put out an ad, like, you know, hey, trucking insurance. Of course, the phone's going to ring, right? But then placing the business and and being able to logistically handle everything that comes your way within that industry, that's a whole different ball of wax. Um, so you're making life easier on the folks uh, driving the trucks and the folks insuring the trucks. And I think that's awesome. So uh, we'd love to have you back. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, and we'll ha- happily come back anytime. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks a lot.